So in, in this short video, we're going to talk about combination cooking methods. This PowerPoint will be available in a link, so if you want to read through it yourself, but this video is my lecture form of the presentation like I would give in class. So when we are dealing with combination cooking methods, we are looking at methods that get the best of both worlds. So dry cooking methods develop flavor and moist cooking methods provide tenderness. So when we have less tender cuts of food, so we have tougher cuts of meat and large cuts of meat that come from the working part of the animal, then you want to utilize this combination cooking method so that you're not just serving tough food or you're not serving boiled kind of bland food. So the first one here is braising. And braising is generally a large cut of meat. So you want to sear the food really well in some hot oil. That is your dry method. So that is going to create the Maillard reaction, which we've been talking about in this course, that develops flavor on protein food items. Once you have that good Maillard reaction, and you're not trying to cook the food all of the way, you're just searing it on the outside, then at that point, you want to partially cover the food with a liquid. So now we're incorporating that moist method. And there's lots of varieties of that liquid. It can be tomato juice, tomato paste, beef or chicken stock or broth or even just water if that's uh, if that's what you've got uh, it can be wine or beer or forms of alcohol which kind of help break it down um, and so there's a lot of varieties of that that liquid and that water-based liquid so you want to put a really tight cover on it and you want to finish it slowly it's really important that you don't boil it hard particularly with meat because you will make the meat stringy and tough so you, you can do it on top of the oven in a pot, or you can do it, um, or excuse me, you can do it on top of the stove in a pot or in the oven in a pot with a lid. I really like my cast iron Dutch oven. You've seen me use that in a couple of my demonstration videos. It's like a cast iron skillet, but it's really deep and it allows, it gets really hot on the stove top. So I'm able to sear my food. Um, I also like to sweat my vegetables. Um, I know that some people do the vegetables at the end of the cooking process, but depending on how I'm using them, sometimes I'll puree them into my sauce after the fact so I'm okay with them being overcooked. So if I'm going to serve my vegetables on the plate then I do put them towards the end of the cooking process so that they don't get overcooked but if I'm going to incorporate them as part of the sauce or I'm okay or I'm going to take them out or strain them out then I do put them at the beginning. So and if I do that I don't just add them with the water I sweat them down in that dry cooking method, um, often with that meat. So you can add seasonings. Uh, there's a variety of seasonings that you can add. It's a long, slow cooking. And so braising is for large cuts of meat. So you're looking at a pot roast or you're looking at like bone-in chicken. The benefits of braising are you get this fork tender meat, which would have been tough. Chicken thighs are a lot tougher than chicken breasts. So you want to use more of a braising type of method with them, a longer, slower cooking process. Pot roasting is the American term utilized for braising. Uh, the most common food that is done with this method is a big pot roast. And it's great because you don't lose a lot of nutrients and you get this really flavorful, really tender product. So to braise, and I've got a couple of little bitty videos for you that are super short that you'll watch, but uh, you essentially just preheat your pan, sear it up, uh, add your mirepoix and tomato paste if you want to. So mirepoix is something that's a new vocabulary word for us. And this is the combination of celery, carrots, and onions. In our next unit, I'll go a little bit more in depth and detail on mirepoix and exactly what it is. There's a... Um, I have a little video on this called pincé, and this is essentially when you are browning your meat and you kind of take your meat out, you can caramelize 
the tomato paste, um, and then add more liquid. And that really adds like a whole bunch of flavor. And that is called pince. Deglazing is also a new term for us. And I have a, a, a couple of quick videos to show you exactly how to do that. But essentially deglazing is swirling a small amount of liquid in a hot pan. And this is going to loosen the flavorful bits. And so we want this flavor from the seared meat, the Maillard reaction in the pan to get into our food item. We don't want to waste that. And it also cleans your pan. So it's a really awesome thing. So I have a little video to show you how to do a couple of these things um, that will benefit you. So once you have um, done that, so now we've developed our flavor. And so now we want to incorporate our liquid. So we cover it and then we finish it. Um, and uh, large meats with bones, you want to rest it as well. So when I'm doing like a big pot roast or I'm doing like a, a big roast or chicken bones, I cook them for a period of time, um, a pretty long period of time, real slow. And then I, I bring them out and leave the lid on and just let it sit like on the stove for like you know, depending on what I'm doing. For a turkey, I rest my turkey for at least 30 minutes. Um, it's going to continue to cook. We've talked about carryover cooking. So that carryover cooking is good, but that resting also increases the juiciness and really does some awesome things on a chemical level to your meat.